Yeah, how long you guys been married? He didn't tell me what he was going to do because I don't know the severity of like, the situation. Like, I didn't. I'm just scared. In a world of secrets and danger, a woman named Amelia Bassoon finds herself in the midst of a chilling story. Accused of committing unspeakable murders, she is now trapped behind bars, burdened by suspicion. But this is not just any ordinary crime. It's a complex web of lies and twisted loyalty that even the smartest detectives struggle to untangle. Amelia knows that the consequences she faces are grave. She is determined to avoid the grip of guilt at all costs and will use any means necessary, even resorting to seduction. In the suffocating walls of the interrogation room, she weaves her enchanting spell, hoping to manipulate her way to freedom. What starts as a cat and mouse game soon becomes a race against time, filled with heart-pounding suspense. The detectives, once drawn into a playful charade, find themselves caught in a dangerous battle of wits. Every glance and every word exchanged carries tension as Amelia's captivating facade threatens to engulf them all. This is not your ordinary investigation. It plunges into the depths of darkness, a psychological showdown where the line between hunter and prey blurs and truth becomes elusive amidst a storm of deception. This footage shows Amelia Bassoon trying to seduce detectives to get away with the murder. Amelia Bassoon is currently under arrest in connection with the murders of Cindy and Sean Stack. The detectives believe that Amelia helped her husband cover up the crime, but she's determined to do whatever it takes to get away with it, even resorting to seduction during the interrogations. This case started playfully, but it quickly turned into one of the most intense interrogations ever seen. You need to get out from underneath this big time. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you who they work for? Yeah. Yeah, we're homicide detectives, so... No. And you, they want you to be a witness, not a suspect. Okay. So the only way it's going to happen is you got to talk to him. That's why I want to talk to them because I, I just don't want to be involved in any of this. Like, okay. I don't want any part of this. I want to be able to go home. Okay. Yes. Well, you didn't. What didn't you tell him? Um, I wanted to know what my husband did. So I'm guessing like he's a suspect in all of this, not myself. Right, here's the thing that will be in trouble. Mm -hmm. In these cases, you can't lie. Mm -hmm. You can't, which, which means holding something back, mm -hmm. telling a partial truth, mm -hmm. or just flat out lying. Mm -hmm. That is accessory. Mm -hmm. And you know what the charge for accessory to the homicide is? He told me first It's a life murder. sentence. Yeah. No, accessory, oh, meaning, accessory. you know, first degree murder is you're intimately about. Accessory is, is that you're just... You're protecting someone, and I'm telling you right now, you don't need to do that. Okay. If you know what happened, mm -hmm. tell them. Okay. Do you know what happened? I do. What happened? Well, it's about this whole check situation. Well, we're not talking about the check situation. Mm -hmm. we're talking about the homicide part. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Um, my husband called these people. He pretended he was somebody else. He got their address. And he went over there. And I didn't know. What did he tell you? He told me that. Um, he told me that he was. He didn't tell me what he was going to do because I don't know the severity of it, the situation. Like I didn't know. Like it, it was going to be to this extent because I didn't even know these two people were okay. were dead until they just told me that. All he kept saying to me is, "I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it." What did he tell you afterwards? Um, when he got home, he didn't really speak to me. Um, my son had to go to school and I had to be at work. So we didn't get to talk much about the situation. I got home the night of. And he's just like, don't ask me any questions. Okay. He's like, don't. Just, I don't want to talk about it. It was just like this disgusting attitude that he had. And he said, if I said anything, that... that did he tell you what he did and told you not to say anything? No, he just told me, if you say anything, then... Okay. Like if you, because, I mean, I'm not stupid. Okay, but eventually he told you what happened. No, he didn't tell me that he killed anybody or that he was going. But you know that he was going over there. I knew that he was going over there. What day? It was at nighttime. And what was he wearing when he went over there? Um, he had jeans and a blue shirt on. I don't even know how he got their address is what I'm trying to figure out. But you know he was going over there. He told me, he's like, he's like, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'll take care of it. 
talking about them, though. I'm guessing so, because that's just what he keeps no, saying. Your importance is in details, not in vagueness. And I'm telling you, that's why, because at any point in time during this that it comes out that you held something back. Yeah, they told me that I would go to jail even yeah. if I didn't do anything. Yeah, and that's the sad part, because I, unfortunately, in my cases, have not had a person tell the truth fully, and they end up going to jail you in prison. You have seen that. I, no, and I wish I did. I try. I really don't want individuals like you I'm to young. go to jail. I have a I know, and I understand that. That's why you need to seriously, seriously think. I want you to think. I want you. I know you're. It's tough, and you're. You're. It's. There's a lot of energy I'm going on. I'm just scared. I want you to think. As, take me or those detectives. Do I want you as a witness, or do I want you as a suspect? A witness. Exactly. They told me I'm going to jail regardless. Well, I, that the the, uh, the fraud part may be, but that's that's nothing. Okay. That is nothing. Okay. Compared to these charges yeah. for first degree murder. If you know who shot him and you know where he hit stuff, you gotta come off that crap quick. Okay. So, where's the gun? He got rid of it. Where? Uh, Daytona. How do you know? He told me. Okay, so he tells you he's getting rid of a gun, but he doesn't tell you he murdered someone. Did he tell you he murdered someone? See, that's the part you can't hold back from. Sweetie, I'm trying to be honest with you. If I, I have no if I say all of these things, will I get in trouble? If you don't say any of these things, you're definitely going to get in trouble. She is the person believed to be the main suspect in the terrible murders of Cindy and Sean Stack, is doing everything she can to avoid admitting her involvement in the crimes. She's not holding back everyone. Amelia, who was caught in relation to the murders, is suspected of working with her husband to hide the whole horrifying situation. But hold on. It gets even more unbelievable. Amelia is determined to escape punishment, and she's using some really clever methods. One of her tactics? She's flirting with the detectives who are investigating the case. Yes, you heard it correctly. What began as a seemingly innocent interaction soon became one of the most intense interrogations you can imagine. Things are about to get very serious. As the investigation unfolds, the head detective takes charge and starts things off by officially letting Amelia know her rights and gathering crucial background info. But here's where it gets interesting. Amelia plays this passive, innocent card, constantly claiming she had nothing to do with the murders. Classic move, right? But here's the twist. She starts altering her voice, speaking in a higher pitch, and putting on this timid act which may be her natural demeanor or a response to the distressing situation she finds herself in. As the interrogation progresses, Amelia begins exhibiting flirtatious behavior, particularly toward Detective Josh. She tilts her head, exposing her vulnerable neck, a gesture often associated with attraction or a desire to display it. The detectives investigated why they were questioning Amelia. The reason was a surprising theft at a bank, and Amelia was involved. She used her job at Chase Bank to cleverly carry out a scheme for her own benefit. Amelia chose an elderly man who had dementia as her target. She used his vulnerable condition to her advantage and took a huge amount of $50,000 from his bank account without permission. To do this, she wrote checks from his account and pretended they were normal transactions, even though they were fake. But Amelia didn't do this alone. Her husband, Josh, joined her in the dishonest plan. They worked together to hide the money they stole. Josh played a role in the operation by putting the stolen money into their own bank accounts. As time went on, Cindy and Sean Stack, who was somehow connected to the situation, began to question the legitimacy of certain transactions. Their suspicions triggered a chain of events that would lead to a tragic outcome. When Josh realized that he might get caught and face serious consequences, he did something extreme. He decided to get a gun. In a shocking turn of events, he went to the apartment of Cindy and Sean Stack and had a fateful encounter with them. He used violence and tragically killed them inside their apartment. The ongoing interrogation had two main goals. First, to understand all the complicated details of the bank theft, and second, to figure out how involved Amelia was in the murders. The detectives asked specific questions about the stolen checks and carefully looked into how Amelia interacted with the elderly man who was vulnerable. Amelia tried to appear open and honest, but her body language showed otherwise. During the interrogation, she hunched over and crossed her arms defensively. 
It was clear that she was uncomfortable, especially when the detectives asked her about the banking records. Her defensive gestures and discomfort were quite noticeable. Even though Amelia tried to act shy and playful at first, the experienced detectives were smart and observant. They could see that her behavior didn't match the seriousness of the situation. These small hints made the detectives curious, as they believed Amelia was hiding important information about the theft and the murders. They decided to investigate further to uncover the truth. By paying close attention to her body language and nonverbal cues, the detectives were able to develop a more accurate assessment of Amelia's true involvement. They understood that her defensive movements and discomfort signified a deeper connection to the crimes being investigated. As the intense interrogation continued, the detectives skillfully navigated the fine line between assertiveness and empathy, which helped them get to the truth from Amelia. They paid close attention to her body language, which was important in breaking down her initial act and getting a better understanding of her involvement in the bank theft and the terrible murders. Their keen observations played a crucial role in uncovering the whole picture. The detectives kept talking to Amelia and kept asking her important questions about what Josh did and what she knew about the murders. As the pressure built up, Amelia changed her approach. She acted innocent and acted like she didn't know anything about what happened. Did he ever talk to them? No, he never spoke to them. He doesn't even know who they are. She smiled and laughed, trying to make it seem like the situation wasn't serious. But the experienced detectives saw through her act and knew what she was doing. They weren't fooled by her pretending to be relaxed and unconcerned. As the detectives continued questioning Amelia, they recognized an opportunity to dig deeper into the truth. They skillfully used her adopted demeanor against her by reminding her of the serious consequences she was facing. They emphasized how her choices not only affected her own life, but also had a lasting impact on her young son. We do something wrong and things, the ball gets rolling, we can't stop it. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Listen, you have your whole life ahead of you. I know. You have seven year old son. The detectives employed emotional manipulation tactics to compel Amelia to confront the reality of her actions. By highlighting the potential harm to her child's future, they aimed to break through her defenses and elicit genuine responses. As the seriousness of the situation became more apparent, Amelia's initial act of innocence began to fall apart. She realized the full extent of the consequences and how it would affect her loved ones. The truth hit her hard, and she couldn't avoid or downplay her role anymore. Even though the detectives tried to emotionally manipulate her, Amelia continued to claim her innocence. She begged not to be sent to jail and insisted that she had already revealed everything she knew during the questioning. The detectives noticed how determined she was in maintaining her position and denying any involvement in the deaths of Cindy and Sean. Amelia's strong belief in her innocence made it difficult for the detectives to proceed with their tactics. They had to think about whether she genuinely didn't know anything about the deaths or if she was hiding something. This made them reconsider their approach and think about other ways to question her and find any inconsistencies in what she said. As the interrogation continued, the tension in the room grew. The detectives confronted Amelia with the evidence they had and tried to test if what she was saying was true. They wanted to dig deeper into the details of her innocence and find out more. The relationship between the detectives and Amelia changed as they worked through this challenging situation. They had to explore different paths and leads to find new evidence that could support or challenge her statements. As the detectives questioned Amelia, her strong belief that she was innocent made things difficult for them. It made them reconsider their strategies and dig deeper into the case. They had to carefully look at the evidence and explore different possibilities to find the truth. It was a very important part of the investigation as they worked hard to figure out what really happened and whether Amelia was truly connected to the murders. After hours of going in circles without making progress, the detectives decided to take a break and come up with a new plan. They realized they needed a different approach to get through Amelia's defenses. Detective number three took charge and entered the room with blankets and a kind tone. Hey, you need to talk. You need to get off the room. Did they tell you who they work for? Yeah. Yeah, we're on the side of the so. No. And you, they want you to be a witness, not a suspect. That's why I want to talk to them, because I, I just don't want to be involved in any of this. Like, 
Okay. I don't want any part of this. I want to be able to go home. Okay. The third detective wanted to make Amelia feel comfortable and reassured. He let her know that they didn't see her as a suspect, but rather as a witness. This was a big change from the previous intense encounters with the other detectives. The third detective wanted Amelia to understand that he wasn't a threat to her. In these cases, you can't lie. You can't, which, which means holding something back, mm -hmm. telling a partial truth, mm -hmm. or just flat out lying. Mm -hmm. That is accessory. You're protecting someone. And I'm telling you right now, you don't need to do that. Okay. If you know what happened, mm -hmm. tell me. Did he tell you what he did? Don't you have to say anything? No, he just told me if you say anything, then... Like if you, cause I mean, I'm not stupid. Okay, but eventually he told you what happened. No, he didn't tell me that he killed anybody. Or that he was going. But you know that he was going over there. I knew that he was going over there. What day? He told me, he's like, he's like, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'll take care of it. Talking about them though. I'm guessing so, cause that's just what he keeps saying. Your importance is in details, not in vagueness. They told me I'm going to jail regardless. Well, I doubt that the the, uh, the fraud part may be, but that's, that's nothing. Nothing compared to these charges yeah. for first degree murder. If I say all of these things, will I get in trouble? If you don't say any of these things, you're definitely going to get in trouble. But that, that's, this is where I'm scared. If I say these things, like, I, I didn't do any of this. Put it this way if you're protecting and you don't tell us everything, okay. then you're part of the crime. Amelia, who had tried to manipulate the detectives earlier, sensed this change in how she was being treated. The third detective's kindness reminded her of her earlier attempts to influence the investigation. It made her feel more at ease and made her think there might be a chance to cooperate. The third detective had a strategy to gain Amelia's trust by being kind and understanding. He wanted to appeal to her desire for better treatment and hoped that she would start opening up and telling the truth. He wanted to build a connection with her so she would feel more comfortable sharing important information that could help solve the case. The arrival of the third detective and the shift in the atmosphere in the room were a turning point in the investigation. It was a deliberate choice to take advantage of Amelia's previous attempts to manipulate the situation. By being sympathetic and not threatening, the detective aimed to earn Amelia's trust and uncover any hidden truths she might know. The decision to change tactics and use a more compassionate approach showed how determined the detectives were to find the truth. They understood the importance of connecting with Amelia and used her earlier actions to their advantage, hoping it would lead to a breakthrough in the investigation. Amelia had been warned about the severe consequences of lying, withholding information, or trying to deceive the detectives. She found herself in a difficult position, torn between taking a gamble to keep her secrets hidden or coming clean and risking her husband's life imprisonment. The weight of the situation and the potential loss of everything she held dear weighed heavily on her. With a deep breath, Amelia gathered her courage to speak, her voice trembling with fear and uncertainty. Can we start over from the beginning? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I let her know she wanted to know. She went with her dad to the bank and she looked at the transaction history and she wanted to know what the checks were. So. I can't tell her. She knew that she couldn't protect her husband's secrets any longer and that the truth needed to be revealed. The gravity of the situation, the fear of losing everything she cherished, and the realization that she could no longer bear the burden of her husband's actions pushed her to disclose the chilling details. And he knew who Cindy was? Um, only because of the conversations that me and her were having. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. The next day he went and he bought a gun. I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. He called out of work. He said that I'm gonna take care of things. The next day he just, he comes home and he's like banging on the door. It was a pivotal moment for Amelia as she faced the difficult choice between protecting her husband and doing what she believed was right. The pressure of the interrogation, coupled with her fears and the impact on her loved ones, compelled her to step forward and share the truth. It was a decision filled with both apprehension and a sense of relief, knowing that the weight of the secrets would finally be lifted, even at the cost of potentially sending her husband to jail for life. Amelia whispered her confession, barely audible. He told me. He told me that he went to their apartment. He said he confronted them about the stolen money, the checks I took. I swear I didn't know what he was planning. Tears streamed down Amelia's face as she spoke showing the depth of her emotions. The detectives listened closely, focusing on every word, determined to uncover the whole truth. 
Amelia continued, her voice filled with sadness. He... he said they wouldn't let him leave until he paid them back. They argued and then... and then he just lost control. He... he shot both of them. He came banging on the door. Um, when he came home, he took the gun apart. He was shaking. Um, he took all his clothes off. He put it in a garbage bag. And then he went by his mom and dad's house. Okay. Um, when did you become aware that he was involved in the murder? Well, I didn't know what, what happened. I just stopped hearing from her. And then when I said something about, can I call her? He told me no. And then he got really mad at me. Like, if you say something, I'm going to kill you. Okay, he's not going to say that unless he told you about the murder. That's the part that's... that's so when, when did he tell you about the murder? It, sweet, you got to let this go. You can't... Anything you hold back is not going to look good. You've got to just tell it. It hurts. It's scary. I understand that. But not talking is worse for you than talking. It was... He did never... He describe how, what... He never physically said, like, what he did or if anything was done. Did he say he shot him? Well, I'm, I'm guessing he had his gun, so... Don't guess. Did he tell you that he shot him? Yes. He said he shot him. Mm -hmm. Amelia's confession was a breakthrough in the investigation. It provided direct information about how the murders happened. The detectives carefully documented her account, noting every detail and the impact it had on her emotions. This was vital evidence that would help piece together the motives and actions of Amelia and her husband. The detectives remained composed, showing empathy and attentiveness. They understood the immense distress Amelia was going through as she shared the tragic events. Their determination to uncover the truth and bring justice to the victims remained unwavering. Amelia's confession not only revealed her husband's involvement, but also gave insight into her state of mind during the incidents. Her genuine remorse and shock were evident in her words and tears. It was a complex situation that would require further investigation and additional evidence to fully understand the events leading up to the murders. Armed with this critical information, the detectives would proceed to gather more evidence, interview witnesses, and carefully reconstruct the timeline of events. Amelia's confession became a cornerstone in their quest for justice as they tirelessly worked to unravel the truth and hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Amelia's words weighed heavily in the room, filling it with stillness and silence. The detectives exchanged glances, their faces showing concern and determination. They understood the seriousness of the situation and the huge importance of Amelia's confession. As the questioning continued, Amelia shared more information, gradually revealing the events leading up to the murders. She talked about the conversations she had with her husband, which helped shed light on the growing tension in their relationship. Amelia expressed her fear when she discovered the true extent of her husband's actions. Motivated by their duty to bring justice to the victims, the detectives delved deeper into the investigation. They carefully gathered additional evidence, aiming to support Amelia's story and get a complete understanding of why the crime occurred. The search for the truth became the detectives' focus. They worked tirelessly for hours and days, gathering information, comparing testimonies, and following leads. Many experts, including forensic specialists and legal professionals, joined forces to help solve the case and bring closure to everyone involved. Throughout the process, Amelia's attitude changed significantly. Her initial attempts to flirt and defend herself gave way to vulnerability and regret. The weight of her actions and the consequences they had on her family became increasingly clear. As the investigation reached its conclusion, the full extent of the tragedy became known. The detectives kept their promise and, once they confirmed that she was not involved in the murders, they dropped the charges against her. However, Amelia still faced charges for the theft and was sentenced to three years in prison. On the other hand, Josh was found guilty of the first-degree murders of Cindy and Sean Stack and was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole.